A few weeks ago, there was a new high resolution photo that was released, and it showed some new details of the surface of the sun that we haven't seen before. So naturally, I wanted to recreate it. This video will be going over that process in two parts. The first will be going over the shader, and the second will be the scene setup to create a Transit of Venus style animation. As with all my projects, this makes use of the Node Wrangler shortcuts, so make sure you have that enabled as well as extra objects. The shader will be making use of some of the noises from the Noise Pack by Simon Toms. I'll have a link to his channel and the Noise Pack below. To start, I'm going to be using a plane to showcase the material as we go, but eventually we need a sphere, and in my last video, which you can check out here, I went over why using a UV sphere is not a great idea. Now I wanted to go over another method of achieving an all-quad spheroid that does not use the extra objects add-on. Start with the cube, subdivide it three times by pressing Ctrl plus 3, then applying the modifier. Add a cast modifier and turn the factor up to 1 and apply. Now we have an all-quad spheroid for better subdividing. Generally, I just use the extra objects add-on to save time. Selecting the plane and pressing number pad slash will isolate only this object, then press number pad 7 to go into top view. This is exclusively an emission based shader, so we can use EV to render for speed, but for now we'll use cycles to build the shader since EV has to recompile the shader after every change slowing down the creation process. Since this is outer space and we'll be creating a very luminous object, we can turn the environment completely off since any other stars would be completely washed out. Heading over to the shader editor, we'll create a new material and start with reference. While going through the shader building process, I make heavy use of the Control shift left click feature to preview the selected node. First thing is we need to add our output shader. We can delete the principal shader and add in an emission shader. I found a strength of about 3 to look nice, but we'll be modifying this later. When I'm working with reference, I like to start with the larger details and work in. To achieve the overall shape we're looking for, we're going to add a Voronoi, set it to distance to edge to approximate the pattern we see in the reference, and increase the scale to about 20. Selecting the node and pressing Ctrl T to get our coordinates for the material. Generally I like to use generated, but we'll use object this time. Adding in a noise texture with a scale of about 12 and detail about 2, we can add this onto the coordinates of our Voronoi with a mix RGB set to add and a factor of about 0.1 to get the result we're looking for. We can then multiply this by another noise to add some more texture to the mask. This noise regular group is part of the noise pack by Simon. Inside you can see it is just a musgrave texture with zero dimension and two lacanarity. It then performs some math to get a normalized result. I'll set the scale for this to around 10 and the detail to 8. Looking at reference photos we can see a sort of highlight in the middle of some of the turbulence patches. To recreate this, we'll take the output of the Voronoi and run it through a less than node set to a low value to generate a black and white mask to isolate the area. We can then take a new noise texture and run it through another less than node to create a sort of splotch mask, which we can multiply together to get the pattern we're looking for. Since these areas are not full brightness and have some texture to them, we can then multiply this by another noise regular node with the fixed range set to zero. Now we've got our highlight mask, we can add this onto the turbulence output with control number pad plus. Now to add some color, we'll run this through a color ramp node with the colors we want. Plugging this into the color input of our emission shader, you can see what we have so far. We basically have the result we're looking for, however I want to adapt this to a full star and not just a portion on a plane. So we'll switch to the sphere now by pressing number pad slash to exit local view, then clicking on the material drop down and dragging the material onto the sphere. Selecting the sphere and pressing number pad slash again to enter local view, we can now add some more features. First we'll add some variation to the luminosity by multiplying a noise texture set to scale 2 and detail 3 with our turbulence mask. This darkens it a bit so we can add 1 with a math node to bring it back up so we aren't lowering the strength too much. Now we can add a limb darkening effect which you can see in this reference photo is how the luminance decreases as we approach the edges. Adding in an input Fresnel node and running it through an RGB curves node set like this to decrease the contrast a bit, we can invert this and we have our limb darkening factor. We can multiply this with our luminance noise and then again by 3 to bring it back up. We now have our luminance channel done. It's looking good so far but the scale is way too small. Adding a converter vector math node set to scale, we can drop this in line with our texture coordinates to increase the global scaling. Setting this to around 8 or 10 gets us closer to the final scale. Now to add some sunspots. This part requires a little bit more complex math and noise mixing. First we'll add a noise with scale 4 and detail 8 and then a distortion set to around a 0.3. Plugging this into a map range node we can tweak the values to isolate small portions of the noise. Next we'll add another noise texture with a larger scale around 45 with detail around 8 and a higher distortion value around 22. We can then multiply this with our splotches mask from earlier to add some finer details to the spots. To take a look at this now we have sunspots covering the entire sphere. I would like to constrain these to just the equator. If you hold Ctrl and right click drag over a connection you can cut it, but if you hold Shift and right click drag over a connection you create a reroute node. Taking a look at the Z channel you can see that at the equator it is 0 and it increases as it goes up and decreases as it goes down. We can take this output and run it through a math node set to absolute. This will take the negative Z values below the center of the object and convert them to positive to give us a band which we then run through another map range node tweaking the values to generate an equatorial band. 
we can then multiply this band with our sunspot mask to zero out the spots by the poles. Inverting our output, we get the final mask for the sunspots, which we can then multiply back into our mask just before the color ramp. We'll add a small amount to the turbulence mask before this, around a 0.01. This is to ensure the only zero values exiting this multiply node are the sunspots. So that's the material pretty much done. As I was making this shader, I got the urge to create a transit of Venus animation, so we need to animate this material. First, we'll add an input value node and use this as our driver. Adding a simple driver with pound frame divided by 2000 will get a value that changes over time. Next, we'll change all our textures to 4D so we can animate and plug in this driven value into the W. We want some of these textures to change at different speeds than the others so we can just add a multiply node in line to bring the values down. We can plug the driven value straight into the turbulence and the luminosity maps, multiply it by about a tenth for the highlight and have it for the sunspot noise. Switching to Eevee, you can see the motion we're getting in the material now, and we're ready to set up the scene. We'll use millions of kilometers as the scale for the scene, so we can set the diameter to 1.39. Then we can add the orbit pass by adding a curve circle. Right now it has a diameter of 2, so to bring it up to 1 AU, or roughly 150 million kilometers, we can scale it by about 75. Right now the resolution of this curve is quite low and I want to increase this. Going to the Object Data Properties tab, we can crank the resolution up quite high. I used 256. Rotating this on the Y axis by 7 degrees by pressing R and 7 will get the orbit's inclination. Since Venus's orbit is 0.72 of an AU, we have a 1 AU orbit, we can just duplicate this and scale it by 0.72. Pressing Alt R, we can reset the rotation and then rotate on the Y axis by 3.5 to get Venus's orbit inclination. We'll delete the default lamp, select our camera, and go over to the Constraints tab. This tab is full of different constraints or methods of locking down parameters of our object. For example, you could constrain an object to rotate only on the Z axis, force it to copy the rotation or location of another object, etc. We're going to use the clamp to constraint. Clicking the eyedropper, we can select the orbit path and this will lock the location of our camera to the curve. Make sure to check cyclic so the camera can go all the way around. We'll reset the location of the camera by pressing Alt G. Focusing on the sun by selecting it and pressing number pad period will zoom in to the center. Now we can add an empty, the kind doesn't matter, I just use to use plain axes. We'll scale it up a bit to make it easier to see. Next, we'll select our camera in the outliner and add another constraint. This time we'll use damped track and change the to field to a negative Z to get the behavior we want. Now we could just use the sun as the constraint target to make sure it's pointing at the sun, but I want to add a bit of motion to the tracking, as if we were using a subpar tracking mount for a telescope. Going to the camera view with number pad 0, you can see as we move the empty around, the camera is always pointing at it. We'll add some rotation to the camera to simulate the axis of the Earth. Rotating by negative 23.5 degrees gets us the result we're looking for. The actual transit of Venus can take several hours, but we're going to condense this down to a few second time lapse. To do this we can go to the start of our timeline with shift left arrow, move the empty a little bit on the x axis, and add a location keyframe with I. Move to the end of the timeline with shift right arrow and add another keyframe. Moving over to the animation workspace, we can open the channel drop down in the graph editor. We want to change the interpolation to linear, which we can do by pressing L while hovering over the curve to select the entire channel, and press T to bring up the interpolation menu and change it to linear. Still with this channel selected, we can press N to bring up the Properties panel and go to the Modifiers tab. Add in a Noise Modifier and turn the strength way down. Selecting the Z channel, we can add the same noise, but offset the phase and lower the strength even more. Pressing Number Pad 0 to go back to the camera view and shift space to start the animation, we can see the motion of the sun through the camera now. Going into the camera properties, we'll increase the focal length to quite a high number, found around 1 meter to bring the sun into full frame. Now we'll rotate the inner orbit path on the z-axis, and holding shift, rotate until we get roughly the result we see in this reference. Right now the animation starts with the sun off-frame and ends off-frame, so we can adjust our keyframe values by dragging the handles and middle clicking to constrain the movement. But this limits the motion over our animation, pressing A to select all keyframes, and scaling by 0.5, then duplicating these on the x-axis. We now have the effect of readjusting the telescope mid-time lapse. We're getting close to finishing, but now we just need to add Venus. Shift A to add another round cube, add a subsurf level 2 to smooth it out. We don't need a material for this one since this is just going to be blocking some of the light. With the new sphere selected, we can go to the constraints tab and add a follow path constraint and use the eyedropper to select the inner orbit. Now by sliding the offset slider, the sphere will move around the path. Moving to the first frame of the animation with shift left arrow and entering camera view, I'll drag this offset value until the sphere is in front of the sun. Now we can scale this down to match our reference. Drag the offset slider until it is just off the left side of the sun, add a keyframe to the offset value, jump to the end, adjust it until it's off the other side, and add another keyframe. In the timeline, press T to bring up the interpolation menu, set it to linear. Moving to Eevee and turning off viewport denoising, we can see our results so far. 
this is ready to be rendered into an animation. There's one more effect I want to recreate, and that's the atmospheric refraction caused by differences in the air's temperature. One way to achieve this effect is to use a noise to displace the rendered output. We can create a texture in the texture panel and import this into our compositor, but there's no easy way to animate this, so instead we'll create our own. Starting a new scene at the top right by clicking the little two-page icon next to the scene name and selecting new, we'll add a plane, turn off the environment, select the camera, reset the location and rotation with Alt R and G and move the camera up slightly. Going to the camera settings tab, switch to orthographic and adjust the scaling until the plane just fills the frame. Make sure the render resolution is the same as your final animation. Going to the shader editor, we'll add a new material, delete the principled shader and add a noise texture. Control shift click twice to get to the color output and adjust the noise scale until you get what you're looking for. Change it to 4D so we get the W value and add a driver simply by using pound frame. Set the animation length to 50 frames or so and render it out with EV with only one sample. Set the output to PNG 16 bit in the output folder wherever you want, but remember the location. Moving back to our original scene, we can go to the compositor tab and add in an image sequence. Finding the image sequence we just rendered out, make sure you check cyclics for the image sequence loops. We'll plug our render layer into a displacement node and use the noise image sequence as the displacement vector. Increase the scale to around 5 for the X and Y. I'm going to use 50 for now to demonstrate the effect. Flipping between the two with Control shift click you can see that this shifts our whole image instead of just small portions. To fix this, we can add a mix RGB set to subtract and use a color with 0.5 for the R and G channels which corresponds to the X and Y. This will move our image back into center and only displace splotches to achieve the refraction effect. I then ran the output of this into a color balance node to make it look a little bit nicer. When using the color balance node, make sure it is set to offset power slope and not lift gamma gain, since this mangles your color data when using the filmic color management. Blender Guru has an excellent video about filmic, I'll have it linked in the doobly-doo. Now all that's left is to render. I used EV for my final render, with bloom enabled in the default settings, everything else was left at default. So to recap, in this two-part video we made the sun shader and animated it. I showed you several different techniques for creating that, as well as my general workflow when creating materials. We set up a scene to recreate a transit of Venus, and I tried to do every task in a different way with new methods every time to try and show you different ways to achieve results. In the description there will be a link to download the shader completely for free, as well as the project files if you want to poke around and support the channel so I can keep making more free content. Leave a comment if there's something I missed or if there's a topic you want covered in a future video. I hope you learned something new and if you want to see more content like this, you know what to do. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.